Well, I decided in 1989, after my testimony to Al Gore's Senate committee, that I was going to get out of the spotlight because I don't consider myself a communicator. I I'm a scientist and I like to do science and I think that's what I do best. Finally, in 2004, 15 years later, I decided that I did have to speak out. I planned to just make one public talk and prepare it very carefully uh, because it had become clear that there was this big gap between what was understood by the relevant scientific community and what was known by the public, people who need to know and also because it had become clear that the government was not helping with that communication. In fact, they were hindering that communication. And I decided, by that time I had two grandchildren, and I decided that um, I didn't want my grandchildren to say, Opa understood what was happening, but he didn't make it clear. So I decided to make this one talk, and then it turned into another talk. And now for the last several years, I've been speaking out more. Uh, but they're still this gap. We have not closed the gap. The public doesn't understand that we have an emergency. And it's not surprising because global warming is only a couple of degrees Fahrenheit, which is very small compared to day-to-day -to -day weather fluctuations, which are 10 or 20 degrees. But Scientifically, we can see what's happening with the mountain glaciers receding, with the Arctic sea ice melting, with the subtropics expanding. And we can see what's on the horizon within a few decades, the effects it's going to have on ice sheets and sea level and on species extinction. So we have to try to make this clear to the public, and it's not easy. That's what we're struggling with because there are other forces the fossil fuel industry, which is trying so hard to keep the public uninformed. And they, they have a lot of resources, uh, so it's hard. Mother Nature helps us sometimes by giving us examples of uh, the path that we're on. And it may take some more examples uh, from Mother Nature to really get people to sit up and notice. But the problem is we don't have time to sit around and wait for natural disasters. So we have to do the best we can, and I, <laughs> I don't know. I wish I had a good answer to that. Well, we should make clear that although the potential problems, if we stay on business as usual, are enormous, on the other hand, it's actually a very bright picture if we take the steps that are needed to stabilize climate because those steps will also result in a cleaner atmosphere, a healthier environment, um, and preserve the, you know, the remarkable planet that we were uh, fortunate enough to get from our uh, parents.